What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're covering some more r slash am I the butthole. If you'd like to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too. Today, we had two new members on YouTube. We had Andre Sasmayasan. I hope I got your name right. And Jade Morish. Thank you so, so much for your support. It really, really does mean the world. And I really hope you know that. So thank you so, so much. And for everyone for taking the time out of your days to be here to support the channel by watching and liking. Thank you so, so much. And with that being said, let's get on with today's stories. Much love, guys. Now, our first story comes from TZ Rip. Am I the arsehole for being too honest about why I don't drink? I'm 33 and I had a serious drinking problem since a young age. My dad was an alcoholic so booze never lacked in our house. It nearly killed me when I was only 27 and was in the ER for alcohol poisoning. It was too close a call and after that things had to change. With my wife's support I went to rehab and proud to say I've been sober five and a half years. My flatmate invited our friends over yesterday. It was seven of us in total, including his friend, Mark. Oh no. I've met Mark maybe three to four times over the last two years. And while we're friendly, I honestly don't know him that well. But you can tell he's a party guy. Likes to get loud, take shots, make gross comments sometimes, etc. Mark brought several cases of beer and a bottle of tequila with him. So everyone was drinking and having a good time. Mark kept offering me drinks the entire night, which I politely declined. It's like he made it his personal mission to get me to drink by egging me on, saying every time he sees me, I'm either drinking a soda or water and it's okay to let loose sometimes. He resorted to teasing me into drinking, calling me a princess. I don't know what that had to do with not wanting to drink. All my friends there knew what I was like before, how bad my drinking was, so they kept trying to steer the conversation so he'd forget about me. But every now and then, he'd hand me a shot glass or a beer and would not let it go, even after telling him yet again that I didn't want to drink. My wife became uncomfortable with his behaviour. I think she was worried I'd actually drink. She grabbed the shot glass from me, dumped it in the sink and told him to stop it already. He looked between us and grinned like he understood now. Mark joked that maybe we should get my wife drunk first, then that to get her to loosen up the leash she has on me. I'll admit, that made me see red. I got in his face and told him, actually, I don't drink because last time I almost fucking died. So unless you want me puking everywhere and having seizures, you shut up and leave my wife out of this. Wiped the smile off him real quick and he apologized. The rest of the night went on and he finally left me alone. Our flatmate did confront me in the morning because he thinks I was too honest with Mark and it wasn't his fault he didn't know. He was just joking around and I made him feel bad. Our other friends agree he was being too pushy and deserved being told off. My wife agrees, so he's the only one now that's taking Mark's side. He said I could have ignored him until he gave up, instead of bringing up an uncomfortable truth from my past. Now, yes, I could have just told Mark the truth without the full details, but fact that's none of his business and a no should have been enough. I only got carried away when he decided to include my wife in his jokes, so yes, I'm wondering if I was a bit of an a-hole for what I told him instead of keeping the peace. Bloody guy making marks look bad. Yes, but you're not the arsehole in this situation. You told him no the first time and that should have been enough. That should have been it. And you politely declined thereafter and he kept pushing and pushing just to try and get you drunk just for the sake of it. So he is absolutely the arsehole and he should be called out for that behavior. And who knows how far he might have went with this. He might have just tried tricking you into drinking in the end once he's had a few as well. I don't know, I might be reaching a bit there, but let's have a look at the comments below to see what they say. Fanny Dog Monster says, not the arsehole, no is a full sentence. Mark was being pushy and an arsehole. Peer pressure isn't cute when you're teenagers and it's especially ridiculous as adults. He disrespected you by badgering you to drink and he disrespected your wife. No one needs a reason not to do something, but Mark clearly wasn't gonna stop pushing you. You were well within your right to tell him exactly why you didn't want to drink. Rachel says, not the arsehole. The only person who made Mark look bad was Mark and he should be embarrassed by his behavior. My partner is an ex-alcoholic and I've never heard her have to explain more than no thanks, I don't drink. It's common decency just to back off of someone who says no to alcohol, cigarettes, drugs or anything. Plain Corn Chip says not the arsehole, obviously Mark wasn't going to stop offering drinks and pressing you into it. Wouldn't be surprised if he tried to trick you into drinking as well. It's a good lesson from him and maybe he'll learn with other people. Congrats on the sobriety. 
Now, what would you do in this situation if you was OP? Do you think OP went too far do you th or, and they should have kept the peace? Or do you think otherwise, that he should be called out for his behavior? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story one. And our next story is called, am I the arsehole for dyeing my hair orange and not caring about the feelings of a classmate? So I'll just get right into it and we'll make it as concise as possible. Writing this during my spare period in school and I live in Canada, so no turkey day for me today. I 16 male dyed my hair orange yesterday. My sister is in school for cosmetology and she wanted to try dyeing my hair and offered me $20, so I said sure. And she dyed my hair a bright orange. Looking straight up like a Chigo from Bleach being an Asian dude with bright orange hair. Personally, I like it. It looks nice and my sister did a pretty good job and she's pretty proud of herself too. So that's a bonus in my mind. She has self-esteem issues in the past. So today I go to school. I get compliments on my hair and I was just kind of glowing. When I was at my locker, a classmate who was ginger approached me and said it wasn't cool that I dyed my hair orange and that I was mocking him. So I turned and asked what the heck he was talking about, mocking him. I barely talked to this dude before. We had like one class together in ninth grade. He goes on to say he gets bullied for being a ginger and that me dyeing my hair orange was an attack on him since I wouldn't be bullied for having orange hair. So I started laughing and said it was ridiculous that he thinks I'm attacking him for having my hair dyed orange. How does that even make any sense? Like if I knew someone was being bullied for having orange hair, why would I then decide to dye my own hair orange? He kind of just went quiet and walked away leaving me pretty confused. My girlfriend says I shouldn't have laughed at him and I told her I wasn't laughing at him, just laughing at the fact that he thinks I'm attacking him. Am I the arsehole? We'll try to respond to any questions, but my next class is about to start. Now, although this story comes across as quite sort of lighthearted and in some ways, but and I might be looking a bit too deep into it, but I feel so sorry for this kid with ginger hair. It sounds like they're almost isolated from people. The fact that they have to come up to you and tell you that you're mocking them. They feel mocked by you just having orange hair that they almost feel like everyone has look at them just because of the color of their hair. And it, I've, I've maybe, as I said, I'm probably thinking a bit too deep on this, but it breaks my heart to think that someone would be feeling that way because of the way they was born. It's, I know it happens all the time, but still gets me every time. Obviously, you're not the asshole in the situation because you just had your hair dyed and you're not mocking them. You didn't go out your way to do this at all, but maybe try and reach out to this person and, you know, Lend them an ear for a moment and, and you may just change their life in that moment. But let's have a look at the comments below to see what they say. Serial13 says totally not the arsehole. Lack of info on your part does not make you an attacker slash bully. Toasty says not the arsehole. You can't cater to everyone in the world and it sucks he's getting bullied for having orange hair. Kids sure can be mean. But it's not an attack on him when you decided to dye your hair orange. Maybe reach out and apologize for laughing, but don't apologize for dyeing your hair orange. Nothing to apologize in regards to that. And if you like your new hair color, rock on and enjoy your new look. Little Oreo says, not the asshole. Following the same rule, Taylor Swift dyeing her hair black was an attack to me and every people in the world with black hair. And the same would be with Scarlett Johansson dyeing her hair red to Black Widow. Was she also attacking all gingers in the world? Girl named Carl says, not the arsehole, dye your hair whatever colour you like. Sounds like he's at a stage where he's feeling isolated, which seems to be the case since he's being bullied, and likely has the same negative conversation in his inner dialogue. If you're feeling like being friendly, maybe try chatting with him, or at least tell him why you change your hair, and let him know that not everyone is out to get him. You might be doing him a favour by giving him a reality check. The world does not revolve around any of us. And OP replied saying, I, I do plan on finding him tomorrow to apologize for laughing. Although it was more of a laugh since I didn't see the connection between my new hair color to being a direct attack on him. But I'm feeling remorseful for laughing right after he told me he has gotten bullied. Good on you, OP. And let, I hope there is an update to let us know how that went. Hopefully a wholesome one at that. <laughs> now, what do you guys think of this story? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And our next story is from a throwaway account. Am I the arsehole for telling my stepbrother that he's the reason I'm a laughing stock among my friends? My stepbrother Alex, 17, fake name, and I have never been extremely close, male 18 here. My dad married Alex's mum when I was 14 and Alex had just turned 13. We're civil to each other and even joke around sometimes, but we'd both rather hang out with our own friend groups. Here's the thing, Alex has always been extremely flamboyant, like to the point where it was a surprise to no one when he came out as he was such a walking gay stereotype. 
I have no issues with him or his boyfriend, but the way he acts and talks, and sometimes even the way he dresses, is really annoying. I can say it's not a phase as he's been this way since I met him, but it doesn't make it any less frustrating. I even thought he was genderqueer or something for a while. He used to have pretty long hair, which he has ditched for the minute, and is not opposed to wearing crop tops. It's embarrassing, I actually cringe for him sometimes. He was mistaken for a girl so many times when he had long hair, and it never bothered him. Whereas I'd be kind of humiliated if someone thought I was a girl. So the last time I had friends over, pre-COVID, they thought it was pretty amusing when we walked in on Alex, dancing around the living room, in a crop top, with our little sister, Jess. She's six. They were blaring Lady Gaga or Beyonce or some crap, and my friends thought it was absolutely hilarious. They teased me about it for ages. They still bring it up now. I was very self-conscious about having friends over after that. A friend of mine recently had a fallout with his parents and has been essentially kicked out. My dad and his wife said they can stay here if need be, as we have a sofa bed and I was really hesitant. I know for a fact that my friend will take the absolute piss after staying here for a couple of weeks and he'll tell all of my other friends about my weird stepbrother. Alex asked me several times why I was so hesitant and made out like I didn't want to help my friend. He seemed to be talking down to me like a child so I snapped at him. I told him that he makes me a laughing stock amongst my friends. They humiliate me for having anything to do with him. He was a bit taken back by me snapping at him and left the room. I later found out he had been crying. My dad gave me an awful lecture about how I treat Alex, but I think I was just stressed out and the words just came out. I wish I hadn't said that and I would take them back in a heartbeat, if I could, but I can't. Plus, I think Alex was a bit overdramatic after the fact. Am I the arsehole here? And there is an edit after this post, but we'll cover that after the initial comments. So we're going to go straight to them for this one with Annie Droid saying, you're the arsehole. Your brother is doing nothing wrong. The choices you described have literally nothing to do with you. And if your friends will give you a hard time over it, then they're just as big as an arseholes as you. That BLK man says, hmm, so if you don't care about him being gay and flamboyant, why do you hang out with homophobes and care about their opinion of you? You're the arsehole, by the way. And Dwight Eisenhower said, you're the arsehole. You called him a laughing stock for who he was. He didn't do a damn thing wrong to you. Your friends are just being dickheads as friends are. And the more you react, the worse it'll get. You blew up on the wrong person and, and beyond a doubt, you're the arsehole. Apprehensive Ad says, you're the arsehole. You literally attacking him for being himself. He didn't do anything to you. He just minded his own business. Your friend's opinions and attitudes aren't his responsibility. Sounds like you need better friends and to be a better person yourself. Now we're going to read the edit. Right, I get it. You'll think I'm a complete asshole, but I want to clear things up. I am not a homophobe. I have no issue with Alex being gay. I have no issues with his boyfriend. Hell, I've walked in on them before when they thought everyone was out and just apologized and left the room. I know Alex would do the same if it were me and my girlfriend. That does not bother me in the slightest. What does bother me is coming home to one of Alex and Jess's little dance parties in the living room, having to see them dancing around and singing bad romance or whatever. It is great he's bonding with Jess, he's always been good with her, but it's just cringeworthy to watch. And my friends noticed that it's cringeworthy. They thought it was hilarious when our new maths teacher mistook Alex for a girl in the middle of class. Alex just made it worse by making a joke about how he was my sister. My friends think it's brilliant, I think it's humiliating. I'm not a homophobic person. I just want Alex to stop trying to humiliate me in front of my friends. Also to the people saying things like get new friends and Alex is your brother. No, he is my stepbrother. He and I did not grow up together. We moved into the same house a few years ago because my dad married his mum. My friends and I have been friends since primary school. They are like brothers to me. I do care about Alex and will apologize for snapping at him and making him cry, but I'm not going to lose friends over him. Now, what do you guys make of this story? How would you deal with it? How do you think this situation should be dealt with? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story three. And our next story is from a throwaway account. Am I the arsehole for anonymously reporting my fiance to a hospital? I'm male 33, been with my fiance, female 32, for six years in total. She's a doctor and has been working at the local hospital for three years after moving from another town. We'd argue sometimes over different matters, but nothing major or too serious until now. Now, I'm not the type that calls every other hour whenever she's away or anything. I give her a space and I respect her privacy. I never really tried to even ask how her day at work was because she likes to keep work slash personal life separate. Understandably so. But things have changed. 
I noticed there was this guy who had been a patient under her care who always gets brought up. For example, she'd have his number and call him outside of work. I was surprised when I heard her talking about him to a close friend of hers. And when I asked, she told me patient confidentiality. So I shouldn't ask who this guy is. I basically knew nothing about him other than he receives treatment under her care. That's it. I tried to let it go and thought nothing of it, but I couldn't ignore her interest in this particular patient. After she started contacting him during late times at night for long periods, I just confronted her and she lashed out saying I was trying to get involved in her job and trying to control her. I ended up reporting her anonymously after she behaved like this and I did my best to not make her feel like I had anything to do with it but she came home and yelled at me telling me that I was behind the issue she had at work and that the hospital officials have spoken with her and got the patient involved as well after they received a complaint against her. She somehow knew and yelled at me for wanting to ruin her career by being petty. She refused to sit down and talk, packed her things and left. She told me not to try and contact her because she wanted to rethink being with someone who has no regard for her hard work. I tried to explain to her but she keeps lashing out at me. I felt absolutely terrible but her reaction wasn't fair to me at least. She didn't even think about how her behaviour was affecting me and kept calling me petty. Info, I was able to determine exactly which patient she was talking to her friend about by talking to her friend. Otherwise I wouldn't have felt strongly that something was going on. A friend told me that my fiancé mentions this patient a lot and talked about him in details. She'd get so defensive whenever I try to have a conversation with her about this issue and make sure I get zero answers. Also, whenever she's on the phone with him, she'd walk out and stay gone for a long time. Then stay quiet afterwards. Honestly, at this point, it's pretty obvious and I feel so bad that she's behaving like this now after six years. I've never seen her act like this ever. I have an awful feeling and I just can't take it. Oh dear, this story, man. It doesn't really say what kind of doctor she is in this one, but what you done out of jealousy has caused her a massive amount of trouble, I imagine. And if you're suspecting cheating, why didn't you just come out and say it? Why are you not just saying, can we have a sit down and can we have a chat and say, I suspect you're cheating or <laughs> somewhere around there, right? For you to sit on this and then call the hospital and report her for what she's doing. I can't blame her for walking out for this. You're the one who's being petty in this situation. But I Will Awake says, you're the arsehole, your behavior was petty. If you suspected cheating, you should have talked about your concerns with her or just left, not called her job in an obvious attempt to get her in trouble or fired. Sunshine and Murder says, you're the arsehole. I noticed you don't say what kind of doctor she is. Either way, you reported her anonymously, which means you already knew you were being an arsehole and you didn't want to commit to your arseholery. Doesn't matter, still an arsehole. Angela Evans says, you're the arsehole. It sounds like to me you reported her out of jealousy. It's not clear that she was acting unprofessionally or breaking patient confidentiality. HIPAA. Calling a patient outside of work and talking about a patient. If she's not sharing protected information, it's not grounds for her being reported. Instead of trying to gain to have a mature conversation with her or giving her an ultimatum, etc., you took it out on her career. Double Stitch says and quotes, I'm not the type that calls every other hour whenever she's away or anything. And then says, don't applaud yourself. That's incredibly low bar. And then quotes again saying, I give her space and I respect their privacy. Then says, these are lies. And quotes again, she didn't think about how her behavior was affecting me and kept calling me petty. And then says, you've tried to destroy this person's career for no good reason. She has no obligation to care how this is affecting you. You're also refusing to honor her demand for no contact. Be glad she hasn't taken out a restraining order on you yet. You need a professional therapist, not Reddit, but since you're asking here for judgment, you're the arsehole. Edit, let's not waste time on flights of imagination. OP is an unreliable narrator. In addition to the multiple lies identified above, OP still thinks she's his fiance after she's moved out and told him never to contact her again. He either doesn't realize or won't accept he's been dumped. He's given us every reason to distrust his claims about phone calls. His complaint also went nowhere. She's still employed and has been placed on administrative leave. His entire post is textbook delusions of characteristic of domestic abusers. That reveals nothing about the professional integrity of his ex and everything about his mental health or lack thereof. It's rare that I advise anyone to seek professional therapy. And Fair Account says, you're the arsehole, you have no idea what the situation was here. Obviously, she knew it was you considering you have been obsessing over the situation. You clearly don't love your girlfriend if you're willing to jeopardize her career over your petty jealousy over something you don't even know is appropriate. You are overbearing and controlling and of course, she was going to leave you. I can't believe you would think otherwise. 
Now, I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation? It's not really a tough one, is it? <laughs> Let me know what you would do in this situation. Say if you was the partner of OP, how would you deal with it? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story four. Once again, guys, thank you for being here today. The time out of your day is always, always truly appreciated. And if you're feeling extra spicy, you can support the channel either through YouTube membership by clicking that join button down below or heading on over to Patreon, link in the description and join in there. It is really, really helpful to this channel as we slowly transition into part-time YouTube. Oh, I say scary times, man, I tell you. But thank you for being here. Thank you for the time out of your day and I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.